Welcome to Season 2 of Twelve Chimes It's Midnight, an anthology of horror suspense plays. I'd like to give a big thank you to a number of people who have contributed and supported the show so far. A big thank you to the talented Jeff Herman for his fantastic Season 1 art that you can see on the new YouTube channel. And this first episode of Season 2 features the work by artist Kirsten Trudowski. Please check out her website at kirstentrudowskiart.com. K-I-R-S-T-E-N-T-R-A-D-O-W-S-K-Y-A-R-T dot com. And coming up is art by Kim Ross and Arthur Kay. Arthur is a regular speaker and fellow of Odd Salon. A big thank you to him and to the support of Odd Salon, an evening series of fascinating lectures on history, science, art, and adventure, who have given me a great venue to tell people about the show. Please check them out at oddsalon.com. A big thank you goes out to Kurt Reebok of the Kurt Reebok Trio and Randy O'Dell for their music in Season 1, Episode 5. We'll be hearing more from them, as well as music from spooky Jill Tracy in Season 2. And I'm joined in Season 2 by other writers from the ranks of our regular cast, Brett Stillo, Josh Horowitz, and Odd Salon fellow Beth Adella. I also want to give a shout out and thank yous to the folks that have been so supportive with words of encouragement, answers to my many questions, plugging 12 chimes on their own podcasts, and just generally being an inspiration. Thanks to audiodrama.com, that's audio-drama.com, for including 12 chimes in their 31 days of horror promo. We, of course, are day 12. Thanks to Mike Brown and his super creepy podcast, Pleasing Terrors. To Tracy and Jerry of the Hillbilly Horror Stories, their banter and fascinating stories are addictive. Thanks to Austin Beach of Winnebago Warrior and Pete Lutz of Pulp Puri Theater. A super big thanks to Joshua, Tim, and Eric for showcasing with hilarious and on-point discussions the best of horror suspense old-time radio. Check out their podcast, The Mysterious Old Radio Listening Society. And of course, a shout out for our own Josh Horowitz and Brett Stillo, their five minutes of trouble podcast about the film Big Trouble in Little China. And finally, a big thank you to all the talented folks in our cast, Beth Abdella, Kylie Brokaw, Josh Horowitz, Scott Lewis, Aaron Seymour, Brett Stillo, former thrill peddlers Audra Wolfman, Crystal Y, and Cameron Ng, and newbies to 12 Chimes, Beth Damiano and Matthew Nelson. Thank you, everybody. And now, on to the show. Twelve chimes, it's midnight, at midnight, anything can happen. Have you dreamed of treasure, the kind that drives you through thirst and hunger? Consider yourself lucky that your dreams don't take you to the superstition mountains of Arizona, like George and Lem. Join us now for a story of greed beneath a relentless sun in the play Superstitions. hot out today. You think with all this time we've spent in the mountains, we'd be used to the heat by now, eh, Lem? Not these mountains, George. You'll never catch a break here. Not in the superstition mountains. It's only gonna get hotter before this day is done. I wonder how Grisby's doing. He's got a lead on us, but he's not used to this terrain like we are. I will catch up to him, sure as shooting. We just gotta keep moving, though. Come on. You think he knows where it is, Lem? You think he's figured out the location of the lost Dutchman mine? 
Uh, Grisby's always been an armchair treasure hunter, keeping a low profile in his office at the university, going over old charts and Peralta stones, looking for clues to find the Dutchman's gold. For him to get out from behind that desk and come out here, he's got to be onto something. When I got word he was buying supplies and ammunition in Phoenix a few weeks ago, I knew something had to be up with old Grisby. Yep. Grisby don't talk. Grisby just does. So if he's coming out to the superstitions all by himself, he must think he's found something on one of his old maps. Something all the rest of us who have been looking for the Lost Dutchman may have missed. Something big. The Lost Dutchman's mine. All that gold. The biggest mother load in the whole Southwest. You know, after all these years and so many fellows looking for it and coming up empty, I was starting to doubt it really existed. It was all just a legend. A story cooked up by a drunken miner in a bar. Ah, oh, the Dutchman's mine's real, George. It's just as real as that sun up there, beating down on our backs. And we're the guys who are going to find the Dutchman's treasure. We're going to make the biggest gold strike anyone's ever seen. And what about Grisby? What about Grisby? So we catch up to him. We follow him to the mine. Then what? We're going to make some sort of deal? Become partners? Share the treasure? Oh, I wouldn't worry too much about old Grisby. I'd be keeping my mind on the superstitions here. You know these mountains, George. They're treacherous. They've broken men, swallowed them up, never to be seen again. When I think about these mountains and a poor greenhorn like Grisby... Treacherous, George. Treacherous. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it sure would be a shame if Grisby had a, a, an accident. <sighs> Jeez, look around, huh? Steep trails, rock slides, rattlesnakes, scorpions. And that desert heat always bearing down on you. There's a thousand ways a man can die out here. Damn, what an ungodly place. God? <laughs> oh, he don't want nothing to do with the superstitions. Take a look around. The devil made this place. It's his own private playground. Boy, you can say that again. You know what the Apaches say about the superstitions? The Apaches? <laughs> nah. They, they got a tale uh, about a hole somewhere in these mountains. A deep hole that goes straight down into the earth to some kind of underworld. The Apache's version of hell. A hot wind shoots up from that hole, makes a fierce dust storm, heats up the air for miles and miles, until the sky is practically burning. Hell on earth. Who knows what else comes up out of that hole. No kidding. Well, the only hole around here I care about is packed with beautiful gold nuggets the size of... Well, hold on a minute. You see that, George? Uh, see what? Up ahead, down in that gully below the trail. What do you see? Gosh, I, I don't see... Uh, oh, wait a minute. Yeah, I see something now. Looks like a big black sack lying in the sun. Here, hand me your binoculars. Uh... Here you go. W what do you make of it? Looks like some sort of a body. W what, like an animal? No. It's the body of a man. <clears throat> dang, dang, this is steep. It'd be a nasty ride if you lost your foot in here. Rolling down this gully, getting all torn up by all these rocks. Lem! Lem! How's it look down there? Is he... Dead? Yep. Pretty much. Oh, lordy. This superstition mountains took another one. Now, take a close look, George. Check out his clothes and his gear. Seems like I've seen them before. George! It's Grisby! Yeah, Grisby. Poor bastard. <laughs> Lamb! Lamb! Grisby's head! Where's his head? Oh, yeah. I was wondering when you'd notice that. It's torn clean off his body! 
it's nowhere to be found, just like, just like Alicia Revis and Adolf Ruth. And James Cravey and a whole bunch of other guys looking for the Dutchman's mine. And every single one of them ended up headless as corpses rotting in the sun. Yeah, yeah, I know. I've heard it all before. Stories and legends. Legends about a curse on the Dutchman's treasure and all those who go looking for it. Nah, I don't care about legends. I care about facts. And the fact is, Grisby thought he could find that mine. It got him to leave his desk and come out here. What did you find, Grisby? How much did you know? Lamb, what are you doing with Grisby's body? Oh, he must have a map, a chart, notes, something. You should just leave him be. I will, as soon as I find what I'm looking for. Just leave him be! Leave him be! Now settle down, George. You think Grisby's gonna mind? <laughs> ah, here we go. In his left front pocket. It's a map. Oh, I knew he had to have one. Thanks, Grisby, old boy. You're gonna make us rich men. Come on, let's get out of here. Yeah, you're right. Now the sun is burning us alive. We'll take a closer look at that map tonight, after we make camp. Lay, what, what, what should we do about Grisby? What, you want to take time to bury him? Under this blazing sun? Nah. nah. He belongs to the superstitions now. I'll let the mountain have him. It can divide him up between the buzzards and the worms. Now, let's go. Here, throw some more wood on that fire, huh, George? All these damn mountains. They roast you alive in the daytime, and then they freeze you to death at night. The superstitions just don't like people. You can feel it in the night air. Hell, you can almost hear it. The mountains calling out a warning, telling folks to keep away. Ah, you just need to warm up a bit, George. Here, pour yourself a cup of coffee. And then let's take a look at this map. Here, bring the electric lantern over here, will ya? Alright, now, take a look at this quadrant of the map. Now, this area here, out beyond Weaver's Needle. We never looked out there before. I don't think nobody has. That's wicked country. Sheer cliffs. You'd have to be a mountain goat to make your way up there. But that's exactly where Grisby made his mark. Here, look at the circle he made with a red pencil. Yeah, I'm looking. And look over here at these weird symbols Grisby drew on the edge of the map. Those look like the same symbols you'd see on the Peralta stones. Exactly. Ancient petroglyphs carved into the rock. Oh, we've seen them all over these mountains. No one's ever been able to figure out what to say or mean. They're a mystery. Until now. What do you want to bet that we find petroglyphs like these in this area Grisby circled? When we find them, we're going to find the Lost Dutchman Mine. <laughs> um, there ain't nothing out there but hardship and death. But what if there is something out there, George? What if there is? For years, every desert rat from Phoenix to Flagstaff has been coming to these mountains looking for the Dutchman's Mine. You don't have to tell me about that. And in all those years, nobody's found a thing. Not so much as a thimble full of gold dust. Think about it, George. We've all been combing the same area, on and off the trails around Miner's Needle, miles from the spot Grisby's map is pointing to. You'd have to be crazy to go poking around up in that part of the superstitions. Yeah, crazy. Like maybe the Dutchman himself. What if nobody's found the mine because they've been looking in the wrong place? Uh, it's too risky. We'll break our necks out there, Lamb. One slip on a trail and it's adios. Lots out. But ain't it worth the risk? 
Ain't it worth it to just try and get your hands on the greatest mother load in history? But what if, what if, what if Grisby's wrong, Lamb? What if there ain't nothing out there? Ah, oh, Grisby was nobody's fool. Look at that circle he made on the map. That was enough to make him rush out here and get himself killed. And that's enough to convince me. I just don't see why we have to rush into things. What if we go back to town and sneak into Grisby's office What's to- What's the matter with you? You've been after the gold as long as I have. You've wanted it as much as I have. Now all of a sudden you're backing off? Look, I, I just don't want to end up like Grisby. Sweet Jesus, is that what's got you spooked? Now you know what killed Grisby? Grisby and his two left feet. His feet didn't tear his head off. Look, there's a million ways Grisby could have got that new haircut. Mountain lions, coyotes. I wouldn't be surprised if there's some old grizzly bear that's still wandering around out here. Knock it off, Lem. You're just making excuses for what we both know about. So let's just say it. It's the curse. Oh, come on. Not this again. No, I mean it. Too many weird things happen in these mountains. Too many men have died out here. Maybe those Apaches were right about that hole. Maybe there's more than just a hot wing that comes up from out of the earth. Ghosts, evil spirits rising up, straight from hell. Call them whenever you want to, but they're out there, Lamb. They're out there, right now. Listen, George. A man's got a right to get a little riled up now and again, especially out here. I ain't faulting you for that. But now you're starting to sound like some sort of crazy old- Can't you feel it, Lamb? Out there in the darkness? That ain't no chill in the night. There's something out there watching us. Let's try to get some sleep. In the morning, I'll it's bet It's watching that... us, Lamb. We can't see it, but it sees us. You can feel it, though, clawing at your insides, running its claws across your spine. Its eyes, they're locked on me. Wicked and human eyes staring right through me, burning up my soul. Don't you feel it, Lamb? Don't you feel it? George! We gotta get away from here, Lamb. Gotta get away from those eyes. Get away! Get away! George, no! Come back! Come back, George! Well, no sign of George since last night. No use sitting in the hot sun waiting around for him. He's probably halfway back to Phoenix by now. Huh. Just as well. When you can't depend on your partner, he ain't your partner no more. Still, I can't entirely blame George. Superstitions are hell on earth. I guess they could drive any man mad, slowly but surely. But not me. Not when I'm this close to the Dutchman's gold. At least George left his supplies. Well, that'll help me while I'm... Uh, what the... Up around the bend. Yeah. Maybe a hundred yards away. Oh, I can just make it out. Someone crouched behind that big rock up ahead. Just waiting. Waiting for me, maybe. Yeah. yeah an ambush. There are all sorts of shifty characters out here. Well, let's see who's gonna ambush who, eh, mister? Oh, if I can just climb up over this ridge, I, I can cut across the trail and get the jump on him from behind. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Oh, it's pretty steep here, but I think I can manage it. Oh, careful, careful. I'm on shaky ground here. I gotta take it slow. I don't want to jar any more rocks, give him a warning that I'm onto him. Nice and slow here. Steady. Yeah, that's the way. Here, let me take a look. I can see the trail below, but where is he? Where'd he go? Ah, there. Oh, he's lying low. But I can see his legs poking out behind the rock. Oh, well, that's him, all right. What a clever boy. I think I can get a little lower and jump down to the trail right behind him. Gotta get my revolver out. 
Not gonna take any chances with this guy. Okay. Got a nice firm grip on the handle. Ready as I'll ever be. Here we go. Hold it right there, mister. Now just what do you think you're doing? Oh. Well, hello, George. I didn't recognize you. Not at first, anyway. How long you been sitting here? You waiting for me? Was that your plan, George? Pretend to get scared so you could run off last night, then bushwhack me. Take Grisby's map and find the Dutchman's gold for yourself? <laughs> Not a bad plan, George. Not bad at all. Except you seem to be forgetting one thing. Your head. Where is it, George? Where's your head, huh? Well, you look pretty silly sitting there without it, George. Where is it? Did someone take it from you, George? Who took it? Who took your head? <sighs> gotta... Gotta sit down a spell. Wish there was some place to get away from that damn sun just for a little while. Let me get my bearings. Oh, that big rock over there. The one that sort of looks like a sleeping bear. How many times have I passed it? Three? Four? God, how many days have I been out here? Maybe if the sun would stop beating on my head, I could remember. Ah, I'm going around in circles here. Damn it, I followed Grisby's map to the letter. Made my way through some of the toughest terrain and all the superstitions, but I can't find any sign of the Dutchman's mine. Is that the wind? Or is that you, George? <laughs> Laughing at me. Yeah, I must look pretty silly out here playing Here We Go Round the Mulberry Bush with Grisby's map. <laughs> oh, but I'm so close. So close to all that gold. Hell, I could be right on top of it, but there's no sign of it. Nothing at all. Is this part of the curse, George? The closer you get to the mother load, the deeper the superstitions hide it, keep it buried? Well, maybe it's sitting in that hell the Apaches talk about. Yeah, yeah, pretty funny, ain't it, George? Pretty funny. I can't hold out here much longer. Hell, my goose may already be cooked. At this point, I'd be lucky to make it out of here and get back to Phoenix. Either way, I gotta get moving, or, or else it's... Hey, hey, hey. hey, now. Hey, would you look at that? That rock. The sleeping bear. Now, there's something on it. Markings. How could I have missed them before? It's like they just suddenly appeared. Eh. <laughs> guess it's the sun playing tricks with me. Yeah, there it is, plain as day. A weird-looking triangle carved into the side of the stone. It's identical to one of the symbols Grisby drew on his map. But what does it mean? A triangle. A triangle. An arrow? Yeah. Yeah, it's pointing at the ground. Pointing to the lost Dutchman? Now, the soil at the base of the rock is soft, like maybe somebody was digging here once. Here, let me get my shovel. Nothing left to do now but dig. Not a real promising chore, but it's about all I've got to go on. This is backbreaking. Oh, looks like somebody did dig here a long time ago and filled up the hole. Oh, oh God, gotta, gotta keep digging. Gotta just keep digging. Oh, what was that? Oh, the shovel hit something. <laughs> I gotta clear away more earth. Son of a... Look at that. It's a board. 
a big wooden board, some kind of hatch to seal up the hole. Now let me take a closer look. Symbols carved on the wood, exactly like the symbols on Grisby's map. I'll be damned. Oh, this has got to be it. The Lost Dutchman Mine. Lordy. It's black as pitch down there. How far does it go down? Now, let me get the electric lantern. The lantern's barely making a dent in this darkness. I think I can make out the bottom of the hole, though. These rocks along the side seem pretty firm. I think I can make my way down. Down to the bottom. There! I made it! By God, I made it! I'm in the Dutchman's Mine! It's still hard to see much of anything. It's dark as sin. Hope the lantern can hold out. Let's see. I think I can feel a draft. Yeah, yeah. Look at that. The entrance to a tunnel. And that can only lead to just one thing. Take it easy now, boy. Be careful taking these last few steps. That's all that's separating me and the Dutchman's gold. Oh, I think I see a sort of chamber up ahead. Just a few more steps. Just a few more steps. God almighty, can this really be it? I found it! I found the greatest treasure in the whole Southwest! It's the motherlode! The goddamn motherlode! Ha <laughs> ha! Waiting all this time! Waiting for me. Look at that. There are shelves lining the walls of the chamber. Somebody was really busy here once. And every shelf is full, packed with nuggets. Just look at the size of them. Now let me take a closer look. You'd think this electric lantern would make that gold glint just a little bit. Oh my. Oh, I see it now. Stacked so neatly among the shelves. <laughs> the Dutchman's treasure. The treasure the superstitions have been guarding all these years. Oh, but it's not gold. Hundreds of them stacked on top of each other. Conquistadors. Vaqueros. Miners. Treasure hunters. It's skulls. Human skulls. The mountain. It's been collecting them all these years. <laughs> the treasure of the superstitions. And now they're mine. <laughs> they're mine! And look who's on top of the heap. Grisby. George. Well, now, how you been, boys? Sorry to keep you waiting. <laughs> Please join us next time for a new play about an overworked husband, his devoted wife, her little dog, and a certain spice in the play Nutmeg. Tonight's episode was written by Brett Stillo, based on a story by Brett Stillo and Audra Wolfman. It was produced and edited by Amy Pavi. Heard in tonight's play were Scott Lewis as George and Josh Horowitz as Lem. Episode cover art by Kirsten Tradowski. Logo design by Michael Dern. And yours truly, Josh Horowitz. <laughs> <laughs>